Good day YouTubers, welcome to part 2 of the Raymarine Autopilot installation. If you haven't seen part 1 already, there's a link in the video description below to that. So without further ado, let's get on with the job. I ran the backbone for the Sea Talking network up along under the gunnels with all the rest of the wires. I do know that the network should be isolated from interference from other wires, but sometimes there's just not a lot of choice in a boat. And my Seatalk NG setup, I just put a backbone wire in here, took the terminator that was in this end out, put a backbone in it, took it to a T piece, which continues the backbone down to the other end of the boat where the actuator is, and a bit of coiled wire here because they gave me too much wire, and this other white wire here is a spur going off around here to the sensor head. And that's all I need to do to set this end of the network up. A couple of days have gone past now, and these are stuck on pretty well. All of these blocks, they're not going to go anywhere. So now I can screw the uh, actuator control unit onto that and get these plugs in there. And then I've got to connect up some power to it. And one thing I didn't figure on when I put this in here was how little room I've got to work. I just used an old style basin bit to put a starter hole in after I marked where the screws needed to go, but I couldn't even get that in properly. Probably would have got in with a Dremel tool, but I didn't have electricity here, so I just put a very shallow hole in just enough to get the screw started. Screwed them in, and I've left them stick out enough so that I can hook this on, slides over the head and then slides down, and then I can just tighten it up there. You don't want to over-tighten them or you'll pull the heads through the plastic. I tighten them up off camera because I can't hold the camera and do the job at the same time. But if it's tight enough so you can give it a wriggle and it doesn't move, that's as tight as it needs to be. As I say, make sure you don't over-tighten them. You will break the plastic if you do. These are the wires for connecting up the positive side of the ACU for the autopilot. I've got an inline fuse in here, it takes a blade type fuse and it's got an LED on it to tell you if it's blowing. So that'll be going in the line, 10 amp fuse in there. Some wire to complete it, some terminals to put it on to the house battery on the house side of the switch. Reason for that is that although I only want the autopilot when the engine's running, engine battery is sacrosanct. It doesn't get touched for anything other than starting the engine. The GPS, sounder, MFD, etc. Everything for navigation is on the house battery, so the autopilot goes on the house battery as well. So anything happens that those units flatten the battery, I can still start the engine. Okay, all the normal bits, I've got some solder joiners here to join these wires because the fuse comes like that and I have to join the rest of the wire onto it. I'll put a ring onto the one end of the fuse and join the wire onto the other end. That's where we're at at the moment. It's a bit hard to tell you this without a camera stand, but I'm going to do my best. These uh, solder joiners, put your wire in on one end so that the wire goes just through the solder. Put your wire through from the other end. Again, so the two wires mesh in behind the solder and then get a heat source and normally I'd use a heat gun for it but I don't have electricity here so I'm going to do a bit of a make do here. The plastic shrinks down on it, it has hot glue in it and it will glue itself to the insulation so that that will never come off. The solder is melted into the wire so we've got a good strong connection there. Just let that all cool off and make sure that it's not going to come apart by tugging on it. That's all there is to that. So I've crimped that uh, terminal on there. Now, the terminal's pretty narrow because it's got to go onto a 3 8 inch lug on the back of the switch. So all you can do is just assume that the manufacturers knew what they were doing. They put enough metal in that terminal to support the load that the wire takes. And that is a 10 amp wire. So since that fits in there, I'm assuming that the terminal itself takes 10 amps. Just need to select a 10 amp fuse to put in that holder. And this is my onboard fuse box. They're cheapest chips from China and I always carry this box on board all the time. You never know when you might want a fuse when you're out on the water. I'll put a link in the video description for these. Okay, these brass fittings that I've put on the pump are the NPT adapters. The elbows that I have are NPT threads. They don't fit into the threads in the pump itself. So Raymarine have given us adapters for that. Also, I took the plug out of this top one and moved it down to that centre one because you can't screw the elbow in there 
there's not enough room between the three fittings. I would have needed to get an extension to bring it out there to put an elbow on it. So it has to go under this top one. And in reality, I should have got a straight fitting for that because then I could have gone straight up and around. But I've got an elbow. So if I end up using the elbow, I'm going to have to come out and up and sort of an S bend to get there. I haven't decided whether I'm going to do that or whether I'll go back and get a straight fitting for that top one. Straight fitting would make more sense, but it's a long way out of my way to go and get one, so got to think on that for a bit. This is the way I decided to go with it. I just see it in there, there's a elbow pointing towards the wall, and that will allow... Oh, see if I can get down in here to demonstrate. That will allow this to come in from the wall, in which case it'll be held right up against the wall just by its own tension. I think that's going to be a good idea. I've got these two coming up here. They're not uh, connected in yet, but I'll put some duct tape over them to stop any dust getting in the end until I do get them cut and connected. Now, one thing you don't want dealing with hydraulics is any dust or dirt getting in the line, so you need to take extra precautions against that. Now that I've shown you the setup, I threw a bit of duct tape around that elbow as well, just until I get things connected, make sure nothing gets in it. And I'd also note the same thing goes for the pipes. You can see that pipe there, got a bit of duct tape around the end of that. Again, just to stop anything getting into it. Not just dust floating in the air, but there's also mosquitoes, wasps like to build their nests in any little holes they can find. So because this project's taking me over a week, just working on it on weekends, I have to be extra careful that I don't get any dirt in the pipes while I'm not around. Okay, next day I'm down here really early in the morning before it gets too hot to finish this job. I didn't want to start it yesterday because I knew I didn't have time to finish it and I didn't want to be cutting into hydraulic lines and leaving the job half done just in case something happened and I couldn't finish it this weekend. That would mean the boat would be out of commission next weekend until I finished it. So I wanted to make sure I had time to finish it. So there we go, on the job now. I am going to cut these two lines here, one at a time, of course. I've got the helm, the vented plug in there. I've got that fixed so it won't vent. So hopefully I won't be dropping too much oil out of these lines and they won't be too hard to bleed. So I'll cut one at a time and get them straight into the T-piece. Do the back one first. As far as I know, it doesn't matter which of these two lines you connect to the left or right hand side. I believe you can set it up in the control unit to reverse it if you get it wrong. So you've got a 50-50 chance of being right. And if not, you can reverse the thing in the control unit just by setting it on the MFD. I've got it all connected up here now. I cut through these pipes using my pipe cutters. And first one I cut through sprayed oil out all over me, which I'm going to take as a sign that there was air in the line anyway, because that's not normal behaviour. And that would explain why it seemed easier to turn one way than the other. So I'm going to bleed the lines. I have to bleed them anyway, because I've introduced my own set of air into the lines. Other than that, all this setup down this end worked as expected. I lost very little oil out of the lines themselves because I was really quick. As soon as I cut it, I had these ends in here and I had the plug set up so that it wouldn't vent. So that created a vacuum up in the reservoir, which prevented all the oil from flooding out down here. Okay, commissioning this. Found your pilot set up in the Ray Marine, Dockside Wizard. We want to continue. Keep going, continue. Check that your settings are right, of course. 30 degrees here, yeah, I don't know. Seems to be what they recommend is the average, so we'll go with that for now. And again, they recommend that as the average, so we'll go with that for now. Check the rudder, okay. Just go back here and you can see the engine's pretty much centered. Now we continue on that. Now, it's gonna move the rudder. I'll click okay and let's see if it moves. Okay, so that moved us to the left, which is the port. So yes, that was good. Do it again. That moved it to the starboard right, which is good. So yes, we're done. Ready to use this autopilot. Go into chart mode here, and one of the things I really like about that is you got your pilot down there, of course, but let's go here. So 
So you can set up search patterns on your autopilot. So if you're out there looking for structure on the bottom, you can set up a search pattern on your autopilot and let it do the driving, keeping an eye out for other boats, of course, and you can concentrate on the sonar so you find your fish. One of the main reasons I got it, the other main reason is that I can then set the autopilot, keep a watch for boats, and get my fishing gear ready for trolling. And that's it. We're home, we can power down. There we go, we're powered down. And that was all pretty painless. It was a little bit intimidating before I started. I had no doubt that I could do the electronics and the networking side of it, but the hydraulics were a little bit of a concern because I haven't done very much work with hydraulics in the past. Uh, not much more than bleeding a clutch in a car, actually. It was all very painless, straightforward, easy to do. The people I dealt with made sure I had all the right parts and it just went together. If you'd like to see any more of my projects, you can go to my YouTube channel don't forget to click like, comment and subscribe for more. Until next time, good fishing.